Great, thank you. Thank you Kate. Um, and this is um, just to start off with my first question. Uh, obviously, TCS has a very long history of working closely and alongside utilities all over the world. Can you walk us a little bit through um, TCS's key value proposition for utilities today? I know it's been evolved uh, as of recently, so if you can walk us through it, that would be great. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's a, a very good question, Gia. I mean, uh, from the uh, utilities point of view, we have been partnering with uh, many companies. Uh, our uh, purpose statement is, uh, how do you enable our customers uh, with a smarter, safer, and uh, sustainable future? When I say smarter, uh, it is more uh, from how do we use, leverage the technologies, whether AI or uh, VI kind of a technologies or machine learning technologies, uh, use them and uh, how do you make the entire, uh, you know, ecosystem smarter? That's the uh, first one. Uh, the safer uh, means uh, how do you make uh, the environment resilient and uh, safer from the uh, data security point of view? Uh, or uh, when we have natural calamities, how do you get back to the services, uh, you know, provide the services 24 by 7? Uh, that's what we talk about, the safer point of view. Of course, sustainable, uh, we all know uh, how important it is uh, being a net zero, right, a carbon emissions point of view. So this is what our purpose statement uh, being, uh, how we work with our customers in all these three different areas, uh, Gia. Great, KV, thank you. Um, so maybe it would be interesting, I think, for the delegates to hear a little bit more details around a few of these aspects. Maybe we can get through all of them, I'm not sure. But to hear what you are concretely doing with some of your customers. And of course, we already heard from one of your customers, NG, yesterday. But maybe if we can start with the net zero uh, emissions clean energy um, um, part of the value chain. Sure. I mean, uh, what I would like to uh, bring out is, uh, well, uh, we are all focusing on uh, net zero emissions. That is must and uh, because of a lot of regulations coming up and we all believe uh, a sustainable future is extremely important. Uh, however, there are other zeros which we need to focus as well. I mean, that is what uh, when we talk about, you know, uh, uh, think beyond uh, net zero. So uh, the net zero, uh, what we talk about, the first one uh, which comes to my mind is on the uh, zero uh, outages. I mean, this mainly talks about from the uh, building a resilient systems, right? uh, net zero, uh, whether it is incidents related, whether it is outages related, whether it is leakages related, all this, how are we going to manage that? Huh? So that is what is one uh, zero of it. The second one is uh, when you say net zero uh, delays, it is more from the customer point of view. How uh, we are able to uh, address uh, the zero delays from the customer compliance point of view or a customer onboard point of view or a customer billing point of view. That's uh, on the uh, zero delays point of view. The last one is uh, zero boundaries. It is extremely important uh, with what uh, the future is going to unfold. Uh, just to give a, a slight background to it, is uh, uh, TCS with IDC Energy Insights. We did a primary research involving about 150 uh, customer executives, utilities executives across 12 countries. There are interesting things which have come out. I mean, the, the focus was on uh, new uh, revenue stream, new roles, new business streams and all of that. So 36% of utilities believe 10% of uh, revenue will come from the new uh, revenue streams, so the new revenues which have to come. And 79% uh, believe uh, distributed generation is the key. Now, with all these things, uh, there are a lot of interesting facts which have come out. But with all these things, we believe there are new players are going to emerge into the market. New roles are going to be emerge in the market. We are also seeing non-energy players getting into the energy uh, environment. With all these put together, I think if you have to provide a seamless services to the consumers, uh, the, and the uh, empowering that ecosystem is extremely important. That is where we talk about the last one is on the zero boundaries. How do you eliminate the boundaries, provide a seamless services to the customers? So this is what uh, we talk about beyond zero. Coming to what we are doing for our customers, uh, especially on the net zero, I'll try to give you two different perspectives here. First one is what we are doing in TCS. I mean, that's extremely important. And then what we are doing with our customers. 
from the TCS perspective, we said uh, by 2030, we would be uh, net zero emissions uh, for scope one and scope two. We are actually uh, putting a lot of technology inside our systems uh, to take care of it. We have, uh, uh, you know, uh, implementing energy efficiency, optimizing the energy usage, uh, right? Uh, and uh, so on and so forth, green energy, green buildings and all of that. We have our own technology solutions, which is called as a clever energy, uh, which is a, a artificial intelligence and machine learning, self-learning based uh, uh, system, which we have implemented. Uh, internally in TCS, in a way you can say we are eating our own dog food. So uh, we have implemented that and we are leveraging that. How do we monitor and optimize the energy uh, usage? Uh, so that's where the simple solutions we are taking it to our customers. To give a couple of examples, uh, you talked about uh, uh, Jerome. Uh, so uh, he was he was there yesterday talking about NG. So uh, there are two uh, case studies. I don't know how much uh, time we have, but I'll bring out uh, very quickly two things. One from Europe and second one is from uh, Australia. Uh, uh, Europe, uh, we all know uh, green uh, uh, European Green Deal, how it is critical and how the customers are moving. So we are also working with uh, NG. NG has been our customers for the last 15 years, where we are actually uh, providing uh, smart energy products to the customers uh, for uh, energies. Uh, sorry, NG's uh, customers. So what we are doing it is we have built a strong uh, digital foundation uh, at uh, NG Belgium. With that strong digital foundation, we are able to bring the backend data. Uh, which is a consumer data to front end, which is uh, easily accessible to the customers. And on top of it, we are building smart energy products. Through the products, the customers, uh, the customers of NG's customers, consumers are able to actually see their uh, energy consumption, monitor, and actually manage it better. So that is where we are helping to bring down the overall energy consumption and move towards net zero. Uh, that is on the NG side. The uh, the second uh, case which I would like to talk about what we are doing is from uh, uh, Australia, which is called uh, the customer is AGL, Australian Gas and Light. Uh, Australia is actually a very, very progressive country when it comes to the utilities side. So what we are working with uh, uh, AGL is uh, AGL is uh, building a connected network of solar batteries uh, and connected to the grid. Uh, so with this entire ecosystem, they want to make a grid which is very, very reliable and uh, uh, resilient. And of course, uh, it's going to uh, manage the supply and peak demands very well because there are battery systems are there. So if there is a peak demand, they can actually uh, use it from the solar batteries of the customers. And of course, incentivizing the consumers as well. So we are building this entire solution. This is called as the AGL virtual power plant. So this is another you know, interesting solution where we are working with our customers, uh, Kia. Thank you. Um, and I do always think that uh, providing some insights into what you are concretely doing with your customers is certainly something that really helps bring stories like this one to life, uh, your value proposition story, I mean, to life. And it's always something that's very well received. Maybe can I ask you to pri provide an example or two on the zero outages incidents leakages? Because obviously this is something that is uh, very important with building resilience. So we've talked about actually resilience uh, several times in our summits in the past. It was one of the three R's that we um, had uh, uh, identified several years ago. So it would be great to, um, to hear a concrete story of what you're doing with one of your customers in this specific area. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, here also probably I would like to bring two different perspectives. One from the uh, TCS, what we have built a solution. Uh, we have built a solution called as a, a machine vision. Uh, it's a AI self-learning uh, image analytics based solution, which can actually, uh, you know, uh, whenever you are looking at uh, the various assets, how you want to monitor the assets. So uh, earlier it used to be human who will go and uh, monitor it. But with the advent of technologies, you can have uh, drones which fly through and capture the images. So we have built a very strong uh, image analytics AI based solution, which will actually look at your previous uh, uh, image and the current image and match them and see whether there is any any uh, uh, defect or anything happened to the particular assets and uh, through that you know it is a self-learning so it will keep learning and then it will keep automatically give updates if there is uh, damage to the uh, assets and all of that so uh, this is a solution which we have built internally and we are actually using it for our customers 
just if i have to talk about how we are doing a vegetation management for one of our customers in us uh, southern california edison uh, here also we have built the similar kind of a system not the machine vision but we have built a similar kind of a system where you are using uh, image analytics to uh, assess the damage uh, through vegetation through uh, any of the natural calamities uh, that's what we are doing so it will help you know proactively take uh, measures if uh, there is a damage or there could be a damage which is going to happen you can actually stop that particular uh, you know take corrective preventive action uh, up front so that uh, you know the outages can be minimized thank, thank you KG. Yeah. Um, just two things that come to mind. One is, I think image analytics is really a step forward. We always say that um, a picture can say a thousand words. That's definitely true. And the other one is, I'm glad you mentioned the vegetation management example because we sort of start thinking that uh, vegetation management is something that we do all the time and utilities have been doing for a long time, but doing it in a way that is new and optimizes resources and everything that you have available. If you consider the damages that vegetation actually causes in California with all the fires, because vegetation management, is that it's incredible the amount of innovation and optimization of operations that can be brought about um, with this type of technology. So thank you. Um, I think we might have time for maybe one more um, area. Maybe we can look at the zero delays and customer inc uh, customer inclusion. And I personally picked this one because I look at the uh, utilities customer experience angle at, at IDC Energy Insights. So I'm particularly interested in hearing about this one. No, I think uh, uh, <clears throat> we are working with uh, many of our customers. Excuse me uh, for my bad throat. <clears throat> no worries. <laughs> no worries. So... <clears throat> We are working with our customers more on the uh, customer experience management uh, because that is uh, uh, one of the, uh, I can say, uh, I can use this word uh, neglected area when it comes to the utilities because that is uh, not looked into. Uh, where we are working with our customers on improving the customer experience point of view, uh, whether it is in the billing system point of view, making uh, consumers uh, self-sustainable to a uh, lot extent. So our focus has been there and working with many of our customers. I mean, there are examples, whether it is related to the NG or whether it is uh, other customers in uh, AGL also, there are case, cases which we are doing uh, where we are rebuilding uh, the customer experience journeys. Uh, so we are doing a design thinking workshops, working with the customers, what could be a uh, best uh, customer experience journey and redesign your systems from the customer view point of view rather than uh, you know utilities point of view. Uh, that's that's what we are doing. Uh, enable them. That is actually helping them to retain the customers also. If the systems are not good, if people customers are calling saying that our billing is not good and the billing is faulty, but then if you are enable, you are able to uh, help the customers upfront with the information and all of that, and uh, it helps in the retaining the customer also. Yeah, and I think that definitely we're seeing a lot of attention going towards um, self serve and digital channels and. Um, we've always talked about digital channels in the past, but I think there's really, um, and let me uh, mention that, of course, our annual utilities uh, predictions, which are now called Futurescape, will be launched soon. And we actually have two predictions that look at utilities customer experience. Um, and one of them actually will focus on how utilities are leveraging um, live chats, both human and bots, of course, but to support the digital channel, uh, to empower digital channels, because we find that customers are especially after the pandemic increasingly eager to self-serve um, so it's really important to make sure that these digital channels are supporting the customer journey across all the different touch points and of course all the different different types of channels that they they wish to to leverage absolutely including even the uh, the ecosystem empowering i mean there are cases i, I don't know how much time we have uh, gear maybe we are running out of time i don't know one minute one minute so uh, actually we are working with uh, uh, the tata power and uh, tata motors uh, working with uh, uh, building the complete ecosystem for uh, uh, ev management whether the battery management whether the charging management whether it is a uh, sales management uh, i don't know uh, billing management so it's like an ecosystem uh, six or seven companies coming together and giving a seamless experience to the uh, customers I think this is a, a very excellent solution. Maybe at a later point of time, I can talk to the uh, you and uh, to the audience, explain what we are doing, uh, how it is good uh, for the from the consumer point of view. 
Thank you very much, KB. I think our time is up at this point. Um, so thank you again uh, for your time today and joining me for this very interesting fireside chat.